In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create your own tokens, and then while you're using them, how you can change the facing, sizing, add states, notes, even portraits and character sheets. Within Map Tool, though, you can actually do a lot more with your tokens um, because you can save it as your own separate file, so you can do a lot of customization and automation. So be sure to catch some of the future advanced tutorials dealing with tokens. Now, getting started, when you're going to drag something out as a token, make sure you have the token layer selected. And then you just go into your uh, resource library and drag out your different tokens. Uh, your three different types here are your circle token, your square token, and your top-down view. Now the circle and the square can be made very quickly and easily inside of Token Tool, which you can find on uh, rptools.net. The top-down view you can see is a little bit harder. That has to be drawn out and rendered by someone. But if you look through some of the different image resources that I've given you in the past, um, you'll find in different galleries different, you know, characters and creatures and vehicles that people have made that you can use if that's the type of token that you're looking for. But for making these two types, let's take a quick look at Token Tool. So when you first open up Token Tool, you're going to see all these different um, borders that you can use. You can use any of them, doesn't matter. Um, if you do want to make some of your own or download some ones from different galleries, uh, you can go to Manage Overlays, and that's how you import them in. And then, uh, well, first just making your tokens is very simple. You grab a image file and literally just drag it into Token Tool. Then you use your mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out. Uh, if you don't have a mouse wheel, you can use the little zoom buttons right here. Then you just click and drag for dragging it and centering it. Up here is exactly what the token is going to look like. Uh, you know, this is just an image of a iguana that I have. Call it Rock Dragon or something like that. So you get it how you want it. Um, you can change the different sizes right here, some default sizes and pixel size, or you can change it pixel by pixel here if you wanted. Um, if you break the lock here, then you can do stuff like, you know, making an oval or something like that, because you can have a different width and height then. But now let's say you have it exactly how you want it. Oh, one other thing I was going to show you is transparency. If you look here, you can change the transparency of your token a little bit. But you can uh, go and do save token and save it wherever you like, or even easier, you can just grab out of this window right here and drag it right onto your computer. Or what can be kind of useful sometimes is you can drag it right into Map Tool itself. Then one other kind of token I was going to show you is um, if you go to these solid bases, like say this one right here. Now if you drag in a top-down view that I was showing you before, you can you know, resize it just like before, you get over the top of it a little bit, do use as token base. Now you put this over here and this looks kind of like one of those old school tokens with an actual base right there. So you pop map tool up there, you can drag it in there, you can see it. Oop, see I used the wrong window there. I suppose use that one. I suppose use this window. You can see it looks kind of like just an old school token there with a little base underneath it and everything. But okay, so you have your token in here and you're dragging it around. You want to show where it's facing. Well, you have your token selected. Hit Shift and use your mouse wheel. Now you can see the little yellow arrow pops up, and it's um, going from hex side to hex side. Now, if you had the square grid, it'd be going from square side to diagonal to square side. Also, if you want a little bit more specific exactly where you're facing, you can do um, Shift and Control. You can see it moves just a very little bit. Now, if you don't have a mouse wheel, don't worry. Just right-click and your menu pops up. The very first thing is Set Facing. And then just wherever your mouse points is where the arrow is pointing. And you click and there it is. Now, top-down views do this a little bit differently. The whole image itself moves. So again, hold down Shift and you move things around and you can see the entire thing itself moving. If you do control and shift itself is kind of neat because you can move the dragon along and then actually move it and min move and it looks kind of neat. But now I guess you're probably looking at this dragon and saying that's a very small dragon. I want to resize it. So again go into your menu by right clicking. You go to the size. You have your size menu. Medium, large, and huge. So huge you might say that's ah, still not quite the size that I wanted. Um, but what you can do, well first if you go in the square grid you'll have a few more different size menus, but it doesn't really matter because what you can do is double click on your token and, well, well let me call that out of here and put you back down to medium for right now. If you double click on your token you're going to get the layout here. Now you can use your mouse wheel and set the size you want for what medium is. So let's say you want to make medium really big. So now medium is pretty big, so now um, let's see here, size you know, huge will be just huge. And you're saying right here, this is underneath, you want the dragon, say, eating this guy, but his face is underneath it. You can, just like for images, go down to um, arrange and bring to front, and it's on top of everything, just like before. Now, another thing you can do with the layout, first I'll put the size back down to medium, double click, here's the layout. If you put them back down to 
you can shrink them to like really small if you wanted to too, and even offset them a little bit. Let's say you wanted a little pack of like fairy dragons or something like that. Now you can see he's off in one little corner of the hex, so you could have a couple different dragons all in different areas and have a little pack of them moving around all in one little hex there. So then moving on to states, again if you right click you go down to states, this is just showing that hey, you know, he's dead, um, or you know, blue circle prone, and you, can go just, you can clear them all. You can also set your own um, custom ones, and I cover how to do that in the next uh, tutorial, the chat and macros tutorial. So you can set other things with shadings or dots or whatever, different little representations that you want yourself. Another way you can do that is if you go down to halos, and you can choose any of these different colors here. Say you choose green, you can see how the green square goes around the token then. So that can be representation of you know different spells or, or whatever have an effect on that certain token. So you can keep track of things a little bit better that way. Another way you can keep track of things is if again you double click and instead of configuration you go down to notes. In notes you can type in different things and keep track of you know damage or whatever you want in there. Also if you have some information about an NPC or even a PC you can put it in here just so the GM can see it in, in that area right there. Now a couple other things to know about tokens is you want to make sure that they are in PNG format so they can have that transparent background so you you know can't see the little white square around them. Also uh, again if you double click and go to configuration, when you drag a token in the map tool does a usually a really good guess for what shape it is, whether it's a circle or a square or a top down. But let's say your top down is behaving like a circle, you can then you know change it to top down right here if you want it to. And then also you can, you know, do sizes here and things like that if you like as well. Now if you're looking here for the portraits and character sheets, I'm just going to quick drag these to the side a little bit and yeah we'll use this guy. Now here's how they work. They're both image files so what you do is you just drag an image, here's the portrait right into there and boom there it is. And same for the character sheet. So now you have a portrait and a character sheet in there. Now putting this back here, when you point at the token now you see the portrait pops up which can be kind of fun to get you know a little close-up views or different angles of a certain uh, token special views and top down and then the character sheets are really useful because now you right click and you see the show character sheets up there now you click on that and let me shrink that down a little bit the image file pops up and it's really easy to manipulate you right click and drag and you can shrink it down to say like you know a little postage stamp if you're not using it and put it wherever and then you left click to move it around so then you can you know, again just right click and drag it up when you want to see things a little more closely and if you want it just gone all together you just click on the little red X there for now that you've inputted this uh, you know portrait and character sheet how to save it so you can keep it is again just right click and go down to the save so then your save box pops up, you click where you want it, you name it, whatever, I'll call it Rock Dragon. Now you save it in there, and now, let me click off here and click back, and now you can see it's back here, you can see it's a saved token because it's got the little, little image right there and it has the shading in the background, so that's how you know just your generic tokens and the ones that actually have information saved in them. Alright, so that shows you how to create tokens and some of their basic useful features. That should get you